Hey everyone, Mark and Joey here on a Friday afternoon from Ontario, Canada. If you're a new watcher or a new listener, which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, that's where we live and it is sweltering hot here uh, like it is in, in the Northeast and even in Wimbledon, even that's not our show, but <laughs> it was hot there. I was watching the, the matches over, today. Man. Those guys are in great shape, man. It's just unbelievable. Four hours on tennis court. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. However, if you're in football practice right now, it's pretty hot too if you're in the wrong city. So we're going to get to that. Any However, city, right? we really want to talk about the fact that we're in full summer mode here. Got rid of the suit jacket. It's just too hot to do all this stuff. And uh, what we're doing is we're talking about where we're going and where we're going now is you know, we're already on Roku, we're already on Vimeo, we're already on uh, NGSC Sports, uh, of course, YouTube and and uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, but we're now adding an audio podcast, which really is this, when we just strip away the video, but we're now moving on to the radio, we're now moving on to downloading our podcast um, through uh, an audio version, and where are we going, Joe? We're going to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast, TuneIn, Sticker, Pocket Cast and Google. Uh, so check any of those out if you want to listen to us. Yeah, and the great thing about the, the podcast, if you haven't done it before, you can download the audio, listen to it on your way to work, you can listen to it at break at work or whatever, and you don't have a ton of data being used like you do when we're running video. So a lot of people like that version of it. That's why we've gone there. We've had uh, you know a lot of people talking to us about being able to do it in more places. So that's what we're doing. So really excited about that, just starting this week. But if you want to catch it there instead of where you're watching this video, you can certainly do that now. So anyway, one of the things we did at the beginning of the NFL uh, preseason and camps, and that was talk about the fact we're going to review uh, one team a day. We got a little behind because there was NBA, hockey, and a bunch of other stuff that was in real time. Where's Quiet Court. Us on. And we're in, in our time, we can't, we're obsessed about Quiet course with our Raptors having won the championship. But we, we're talking more NFL football. We're doing the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. I went to say Orioles. It's baseball. also baseball season. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, but the Ravens, uh, who uh, traded away one of my favorite quarterbacks, but they had to, <laughs> they had to do that. They got a great young quarterback. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting times in Baltimore, I'd say. Well, I can't wait to do our Denver one because Joe Flacco and Denver is yeah, interesting. We're going to love but that. Yeah. Lamar Jackson, yes, has taken over the reins of the Baltimore Ravens and uh, you know went 6-1 to end the season last year. Losing the playoff game simply because he did not throw the ball. Uh, but let's look at the team they got. Still a great team around there. They've really built on defense as their strength. Uh, they lost a couple players. One of them in particular that stands out is C.J. Mosley. But they get Earl Thomas back there. Not the same position, but got Earl Thomas. Yeah. Filled that position. Still have a great defense. Didn't lose enough to worry me at all. Uh, still have a good pass rush. That offense side of the ball is always going to be a question mark. And, uh, you know, I think they'll be okay. You got Lamar Jackson in there. And they brought in some guys, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not too worried. I want to focus on this young quarterback. We just did another show. Check it out on the about Browns. another young quarterback. And Lamar Jackson, um, you know, for me, is in that sophomore season. When you talk about the sophomore yeah. slump, went six and one. Will it matter? Um, you know, uh, once teams start scouting him, once teams just getting. So, first of all, let's quickly say: Are you picking them as a playoff team or not? So I'm picking Baltimore as a playoff team, and I'll tell you why. And I, I agree with the quarterback, and I was the one who went through it on the you on are. the Browns, right? You I went are. through all this stuff. Yeah. Here's one thing Lamar Jackson has that is a skill that is so needed in the NFL these days is the ability to run. Yeah. So when everything else falls apart, that's what I love about him is he can take the ball. And we've seen running quarterbacks have great success. You put Tom Brady at the sidelines of that discussion. Yeah. But running quarterbacks can create so much Tom offense. Brady running. And then – and then he's got two new receivers, right? So the thing I do like about him is his diversity. And you put an extra back technically in the backfield, right? And so he's going to have two great targets to throw at. He can run if he needs to. I think that's a big plus over any other quarterback because it's harder to scout a running quarterback, I believe, than a regular you know, pocket quarterback so, or whatever. So I think it's it's not going to be as tough on him as I think it's going to be a big uh, Mayfield. And um, and I think that's why they're there. And another thing you mentioned, which you got to give Cleveland, you talked about in the Cleveland one, the the unknown is the defense. I mean, right. they can win some games for you. That's what they yeah. did at six and one. So I think, and then I also think Jackson really didn't show his whole game. I don't think they let him pass enough the last year or two. Like they got too concerned about him being a rookie quarterback. This year, I think you'll see him throwing the ball. So he's got tons of weapons to bring to the the table. Okay, so for me, they're going to win the division. And so I exactly everything you kind of said, but I think it's more of the expansion of his game. Yeah. I think uh, John Harbour has been locked in now as the coach there. They've committed to Lamar Jackson. I think getting Flacco out of there, which 
I don't one hundred percent agree with, but he's been injury prone. But I think more of the question marks of is he the guy or isn't he the guy anymore? Yeah. You get rid of that. And is so, he going to get back in? And yeah. Is, so John Harbaugh you know, can now make a play, game plan play. for Lamar Jackson. Who, by the way, for for when he got drafted, was asked to be a receiver by yeah. many many teams, including the team he's on. Also, they had these stupid plays where Joe Flacco was a receiver, yeah. which is oh the dumbest God. thing I've ever seen. And then Lamar Jackson as a receiver. The running, what, are you again, doing, what are you doing to a young quarterback? Yeah, so, what is that? So here's why they're going to win the division. That defense, like I said, Terrell Suggs, got uh, Earl Thomas back there, who I think will have a great bat, bounce back season. I don't believe they've lost enough there to worry about it. And they've kind of got enough guys to fill in the slots there. That pass rush is insane. The way they sack is awesome. The intensity back there is great. With that being said, that creates an easy offense for Lamar Jackson, a heavily run offense. But the reason why I think, I think they're going to explore his arm, and I yeah. think that's the biggest thing in Seattle, you need to explore Russell Wilson's arm. In the playoff games, Baltimore's and Seattle's were very similar. Neither coach explored their quarterback's yeah. arms when they really had nothing to lose at that point. That's what baffled me the most. But with the full camp ahead here that they're currently in, you got camp, you got preseason, you got the regular season where in this division, I think ten and six, because of how much they'll beat up on each other, can win it, or eleven and five can win it. Baltimore, I think, will get there to that record, and I think it's gonna be simply the uh, exploration of his arm with the threat of the two great running backs he got back there and his own threat of running. I think they win the division. I think John Harbaugh is a great coach who's been underrated because he's been stuck with Flacco. If people don't know this. When he when Flacco was healthy, they never missed the playoffs, and they yeah. won a Super Bowl. So it's only been through uh, Flacco's injury-prone uh, last few years that they have been not able to make playoffs. If he can keep uh, Lamar Jackson healthy, I think they make the playoffs. I got one more point, but I'll let you go first because uh, well, I'm going I'm, I'm to agree with you on your point. So, okay. and I'm going to reference back to who you said, which is our home team. Uh, just so you know, we did live in Seattle for three years. So when we say we have a home team in Seattle, it's not just we pick them and we like them. It's actually, our home team. You mentioned Russell Wilson. This guy looks a lot like. And I hate to say a young Russell Wilson because he's not that old, but it, he opens up the same kind of plays. And we know that Seattle and our frustration has never passed the ball enough with Russell. And we're looking for that to happen this year. And I believe, like you're saying, this is what happened to Jackson last year. They went straight run to try and make him feel comfortable. What he's, he's good at, what he's used to. Came out of college, running, running quarterback. So this year they got to let that go. I've seen the guy throw the ball. This is not some, you know, guy who can't throw, uh, um, I'm trying to think back of, um, oh God, <laughs> he played one year with Denver and was gone. Tim Tebow. Tebow, Tebow. And, and they always say, can't throw, can't throw. Can't throw. This guy doesn't have that same issue and he can throw on the run, which is an awesome piece. Now, the only challenge they have, as does Seattle, it's tough to be an offensive lineman with these guys because they take off so quickly. So now he needs an offense to help with that. So they went six and one with an offense that was really built for Flacco. And then they put him in there, still went six and one. But they're going to have an offensive pits today. The offensive lineman is going to know that these guys, he gets back and he's going to move. And that's what Wilson always causes grief for his offensive line. But these guys are talented quarterbacks. He'll take them to the playoffs. I think 10 and six is a perfect number. I think you're going to see that. We talked about Cleveland being eight and eight, which is going to tough division. That's what I mean. Really like, tough. so then you could see Pittsburgh at nine and seven. Yeah. Pittsburgh, I'm holding out hope that they make the playoffs. I think it could easily be. 11 and 5 for Baltimore, 9 and 7, 10 and 6 for Pittsburgh. They might uh, sneak in a wild card spot, but this division is so tough. I don't think you'll ever see a team go like 13 and 3. Yeah. Because no. of that, because. And I've they met, play in horrible weather. I've, yeah, I've for referenced a good part of the other divisions. Like the KC division has San Diego or LA, sorry, Chargers, and Kansas City. Well, they get four wins because the other teams in that division are so gone awful. Yeah. That's not the case here. It's really just um, three teams, which means they could easily divvy it up, yeah. home and home, and then that means a 10 and 6, 11 and 5 could easily win that. So I like that record. I like the prediction. I also like the fact, like you said, I like the comparison to Russell Wilson, but it's more the trust factor. So I feel like um, when games that you're going to win and games that are a little bit easier against teams, that's when you got to tell this kid to throw and not worry about throwing three or four interceptions. Yeah. He hasn't done that yet because he hasn't thrown it enough. And in the playoff game against Phillip Rivers, where, by the way, a throwing quarterback tires the defense out more. People say it's running. And running uh, tires out the line. But what Rivers did was, first of all, he has a running game and then threw it a bunch, too, that the defense eventually is going to give up points. Well, when that happened, they still didn't let Lamar throw. When and they, they still did, almost won the game. Yeah, but when they did, he just didn't look like he wanted to throw. Yeah. So that's why now you get a full season. It's not a push to make the playoffs because there's going to be some easy games. Now that he's playing more than seven, he's going to play 16. 
a couple of these games, allow him just to throw a bunch. And if he throws a couple of interceptions, I'm not worried about it. But he's got to get comfortable doing it because when a Phillip Rivers comes to town, you're right, they still almost won that game. But yet, at the same time, you felt like they had no chance because they weren't throwing the ball in that defense yeah. of the Chargers too good. So when a team can run and throw, like the Chargers, like the Chiefs, like these teams you'll meet in the playoffs, um, he's got to learn how to throw the ball because he's going to have to put up some points because eventually that defense is simply going to get tired and they can stop the run because any team that makes the playoffs is capable of coming up with a system but, as we talk about time in. Right. i got another point, but if you want to add right. that, go ahead. Well, I was going to say along the same lines of what you're talking about, the one thing about a running quarterback is when they need to run, they can. Yeah. So if the defense has been on the field too long, that's what I, like, I do like about Russell Wilson, although I love his arm and I wish he'd throw more. But the one thing you can do is you can take that break. That's one of the things that's hard for a Tom Brady to do, although he's such a great passer, it doesn't really matter. But when the defense has been on the field a lot, if you can run the ball, you can get them that rest time. And you ain't got a quarterback who can run the ball. You now have three running backs that are potential for running that ball and keeping, you know, keeping the time I, running off I the agree. clock. I just look at the playoffs, and I'm saying this is a formula. Like I said, it's a guarantee in my mind they win the division. That's yeah. a formula to win the division because in regular season games, you know, it, it's just way different. I'm just talking about if they want to win come playoff time, the one thing the Chargers exposed was they were able to shut down the running game of the Ravens. Yeah. Now, the Ravens shut down the Chargers pretty much the whole entire game, too, and that's why it was closer then. But eventually, a passing quarterback like Phillip Rivers, who also had a running game, was going to find at least some scenario to score points. Yeah, for sure. And Lamar didn't look like he had any hope ever throughout that whole entire game. And when they need a game-winning drive, if you don't throw the ball, it's almost impossible to do a two-minute drill. Yeah, it can. And get down the field. So time. I'm just saying they got 16 games here. I want to see a couple of games where he throws it like 30 times just so he gets comfortable throwing well, the ball. But you're right. But over whole season, he's going to get that opportunity. That's the other advantage right, coming that's true in too. with yeah. 16 games, that's right? Yeah. They're going to be able to pinpoint games and say, okay, that's my here's point, where yeah. we can go out and throw the ball and see what that offense I mean, looks yeah. like. Um, and I haven't seen their schedule, to be honest. Right. I haven't looked at it yet. But they're going to find spots to do that. Right. And that's what they'll do with the kid. And he'll get that opportunity. Yeah. And we'll see that, We'll see what he can do. But I, I have huge confidence. Looks like a superstar and quarterback. And so the last point I want to make, it's not really like a point that I think is going to matter, but I think it's a curious and he might get some playing time here with how good I think the Baltimore Ravens might be. He might get some easy games. But their backup is RG3. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just... Who was a superstar for right, me, too. Right. So here's the reason why I bring him up. It's simply because of running quarterbacks that we've seen in the past. If you're not smart, you can get hurt. Well, I think RG3 would be an interesting experiment in some of these second halves, assuming they can get some leads. I'm interested to see what he could do. He's been really well rested, obviously, with many years of not playing yeah. now. He's been the backup. He came in near the end of, I think, the playoff game, and he and he threw it all right. Maybe it's the last game of the season, but he threw it all right. He looked pretty good. But I just wanted to bring it up because he's back there, yeah. and I think if Lamar Jackson struggles, and this is my one fear, obviously, young kids, and hopefully they don't well, do he has this. skills. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, because there's no doubt you should keep Lamar the whole season. You never give up on him. But I'm just saying, maybe there's a game or two. You throw RG3 in there. I'm interested to see what he can do under what I think is a great coach in Harbaugh, who anytime he has a healthy quarterback – can make a winning team because of the defensive side of the ball yeah. that he's been able to create his whole time in Baltimore, um, playing into their system of the bad weather too. Anytime he's a healthy quarterback, he's always successful. So I'm just interested. I want to see him get in a couple games. I want to see him maybe just play a half or two. I think he's a backup plan if Lamar is struggling, if Lamar needs more time, if um, you know maybe scouting uh, hits him a bit. I don't think it will. I think it will be fine. I'm just saying... It's a good backup. It's yeah. a good backup, and well, you need backups with a young quarterback. Well, you and I as well, you know, guys that come out of college, there's so much expectation, and injury takes them away from what could have been a great career. Uh, you never know when you can come back and play. I'd like to see him get some shots at that, too. I'd like to see him. He's a very ass. skilled guy, obviously, yeah. which is why he was taken where he was in the draft. And, uh, and, and I hate, MVP. To, see, I hate to see yeah. injury pull guys right. out. So I'd love to see him get a shot, year. but they're not gonna, they're not gonna substitute, uh, their main quarterback. So hopefully he gets some kind of wash up game, uh, chance. I'm not there. saying sub to, I'm just saying, yeah, you got a good backup. And I'm saying that's a, that's an underrated skill right and now. He just I mean, needs to play a little bit during the season. You look at Pittsburgh, if, 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 if Roethlisberger goes down, bet against them. Yeah. They got no chance. But I'm just saying, I'd be interested if Lamar went down or, just simply, like I said, a bad game's going either way, whether yeah. they're winning or losing. Throw him in there. I want to see him. I want to see so there Griffin. We, so there we I are. See what he can do. There, we're picking them to be our leaders. We both I agree with that. Yeah, I think we, agree. we both agreed on the Browns side, so get in and watch the Browns show that we just did as well. And uh, we'll look forward to talking more NFL teams over the next few days. Mm -hmm.